welcome to learn it today we'll be taking the very first class of class 9th science section of biology unit 5 which is known as the fundamental unit of life this is the topic 1 this is the first topic which is known as cell of your course now what is cell and why is it called the fundamental unit of life due to this definition it is the structural and functional unit of life why it is termed so because it provides structure to our body it is also considered as the functional unit because all the functions of the body takes place at the cellular level only now we know basically what is a cell and what is its importance now basically who discovered it first of all the discovery of the cell has been done by or named Robert Hooke, a scientist named Robert Hooke in 1665. The right side photograph is of Robert Hooke. The second photograph in which it is written 1831 and name is Robert Brown. He discovered the nucleus in the cell which is just the dark portion and the red circle around it which is known as the nucleus of the cell. So the cell has been discovered by the Robert Hooke which is around red portion in bricks like structure and the second thing is which is dark color and circled by red zone has been known as the nucleus which has been discovered by Robert Brown in year 1831. Now let us move on to the cell theory. What is the cell theory states is the first point says that all living organisms are composed of cells which means all around the world if any living thing or living organism is there it is basically composed of cells it can be unicellular which is made up of single cell or it can be multicellular which is made up of different kinds of cells the second point states that the cell is the fundamental unit of life which means it is the basis for every living organism the last point states that all new cells come from pre-existing cells which means new cells will come from the older cells only which means if a cell exists they can only make the new cells now we know about what is cell who discovered it who discovered the nucleus what do you mean by the cell theory now we'll be moving on on the types of organism we have divided the organism on the basis of the number of cells present so basically there are two kinds of organism on the basis of cell we have divided organism into two the first one is unicellular organisms and second one is the multicellular organism now what does the unicellular organism means is that the organism that are made up of single cell and may constituent a whole organism are named as unicellular organism in simple word it is said that if an organism is made up of a single cell it is called unicellular uni means single cellular means cell for example, we have already seen amoeba, paramecium, bacteria many times. And the second point is multicellular. As the name suggests, multi means many. The organism which are composed of a collection of cells that assume function in a coordinated manner with different cells specialized to perform particular task in the body are named as multicellular organism. Now I'll clear it the organism which are made up of different different kinds of cells are termed as multicellular for example in human body our brain cells are different and cells in our liver or in our lungs or our on our skin they all functions differently for example plants has different type of cells humans have different kinds of cells and types of cells which perform different tasks and animals will have different kinds of cells that's why it is known as multicellular organism so this is a quick glance at organism is divided into two on my left side it is unicellular organism and on my right side it is multicellular organisms 
when unicellular organism comes it is already known that organism that only have a single cell and the multicellular organisms are having many cells the examples are there the three amoeba bacteria and paramecium will have unicellular body unicellular means single body or single celled body in organism we are having a single body but our body is composed of different kinds of cells the plant is composed of many type of cells and animals are composed of many type of cells now we'll divide these cells into the shape and size of the cells now we all know that cells vary in shape and size they are of different different kinds they can be oval shape egg like shape second is spherical circular shape rectangular shape a box like spindle shaped or totally no shape which is known as irregular which is having in nerve cell the size of the cells is also different in different organisms but but basically most cells are microscopic which means it cannot be seen through the naked eyes we can see a organ we can see a tissue but we can't see cells like rbc red blood cells like in blood we are having we can't see them with our naked eyes but some cells are fairly large which are called as nerve cells which are longer in size now let us divide this type of cells into two categories we have already divided into sizes and shapes now we'll divide on types what kind of organisms or what type of cells in an organism have the first is prokaryotic and second we'll study about the eukaryotic cells now what is the basic difference i'll tell you further but let us understand what is prokaryotic cells now prokaryotic cells are cells in which true nucleus which means it doesn't have its nucleus and it is absent they are primitive primitive means old and incomplete cells they don't have all the important things and prokaryotic are always unicellular organisms or these kind of cells if an organism is having they will be unicellular means made up of single cell for example there are many names like archibacteria bacteria blue green algae and all type of prokaryotes as we understood what is prokaryotic cells let us move to the eukaryotic cells eukaryotic cells are the cells which contains nucleus which have the true nucleus present inside it i have already shown shown you in the first page where it is uh, circled in red color a dark portion which is circled in red color that was called as nucleus if a cell have such kind of nucleus it is known as eukaryotic cells they are advanced and complete they are new also and advanced and eukaryote includes all living organism means both unicellular made up of single cell can come under eukaryotic cells and as well as multicellular organism can also come under this eukaryotic cell but there is an exception bacteria and blue green algae cannot be eukaryotic cells now let me explain you further about the prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells the size of cell is generally small which is from 1 to 10 mm and eukaryotic cell size is generally very large when we compare it from prokaryotic cells in prokaryotic cells basically nucleus is absent and in eukaryotic cells or nucleus is present in prokaryotic cells it only contains single chromosomes and chromosomes are essential for the genetic information transport and in eukaryotic cells it contains more than one chromosomes prokaryotic cells nucleolus is absent and in eukaryote nucleolus is present in prokaryote there is membrane bound cell organelles are all absent there is no membrane bound cell organelles and in eukaryotic cells all the membrane bound cell organelles such as mitochondria plastid endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus lysosomes etc etc are present the last point in this difference is the sixth point which is cell division takes place by fission or budding which means just dividing its part into two and in eukaryotic cells the cell division takes place by mitotic which means one cell is divided into two equal halves and into equal genetic material is divided now you will be thinking that 
many of the words like chromosomes nucleus membrane bound mitochondria etc i have just told you doesn't know about it we'll be taking this topic in detail in our next video so please stay tuned to it let us move to the next topic which is the difference between animal cell and plant cell how does animal cell and a plant cell look alike in animal cell these are generally smaller in size and in plant cells these are basically larger in sizes the cell wall is absent because animal cell is flexible and in plant cell plasma membrane is present and is surrounded by a rigid cell wall which give its body very rigid that's why it can take lot of pressure from the surroundings and the cell will not burst the third point is plastids are absent because plastids are only present present in plant cells because plastids help in the process of photosynthesis so in animal cells we don't do any kind of photosynthesis or neither do any of the other organisms do photosynthesis that's why plastids are not present except there is an exception of protozoan known as euglena euglena is an unicellular organism which contains plastid the fourth point is vacuoles are small and temporary but in plant vacuoles are large which is also known as central sep vacuole we'll learn this in the next video what is vacuoles also and the last point is they have centrosome and centrioles but in plant cell they don't have such kind of centrosome or centrioles or if they have they lack it now we had move on to the last topic which is the structure of plant cell and animal cell it is basically the difference between the plant cell and animal which we have just discussed uh, please make sure to draw this diagram and to learn all the labeling which are present in it and if you did this we can move further to the next topic thank you that's it for today's video i hope you have understood the topics very well but for more understanding I, i urge all of you to repeat this video again for clearer understanding if you like the video and its content give it a thumbs up and don't forget to comment your name in the comment section if you are unable to understand or is struggling in any of the topic please write the topic in the comment section i'll sure surely try to get to you soon so for more of such videos stay tuned to the channel stay safe stay healthy and don't forget to learn it